What's going on, everybody? This is Jose Betancourt. All right, so I have a story to tell you. I fell for a scam. I didn't fall for it 100%, but for those that don't know, I have a brain injury. And so that brain injury can really mess with my thought process. And so here's a story, right? This, this particular photo that you're watching right here on my screen is a carbon copy of an email I received. Now the email didn't start off like this. It started off with it with an introduction saying that they saw my application somewhere and that there's a job possibility. And we started to send emails back and forth. Eventually they name Gregory Crutzen. Now, Gregory Crutzen is someone that I've seen, uh, I've seen his work on the internet and his style is very reminiscent of stuff that I do. So here's some of his stuff and it's very moody, very unconventional. And it's basically the type of stuff that I like to see and it's the type of stuff that I like to photograph. So when I heard that he was working on a project with a specific clothing company in, uh, that uh, is based in Spain. I looked up the company. They are legit. I tried to find information on Gregory that I didn't look at before. Like I stated, I saw his work. I became very fond of his work. So... I looked up a little, you know, I went a little deeper and I couldn't find anything stating that he was working on a new project or anything stating that he was working on something with this clothing company or vice versa, that the clothing company had some type of deal with Gregory. So, uh, in my head, normally, right? Before my injury, right away, I would have been like, this is a scam. But I don't know what the hell was going on. Part of me, there was a little voice in my head saying, this is a scam. What are you doing? And then there was another part of me that overtook that little voice and said, well, let me see what this is all about. Let me just keep going. So that's what I did. And so eventually they sent an email very similar to this. Right now, it didn't say that it was for a nail artist. It just said a clothing company was doing a photo shoot with Gregory and that they needed photographers. So it was very similar. It had dates for April, the end of April and May, early May, same time, with the exception it was 11 to 2.30. And it said that there would be a number of photographers. Now, in this body of work right here, it's telling us that it's a $4,000 paid gig, where the, the email that I received, it was $5,000. So I would receive $500 in advance. And then as soon as the photo shoot was finished, I would receive the other $4,500. Then somewhere in here, and I don't want to show the, the email that I received, but this is a, basically the exact same thing with the exception. They were telling me that I would receive an additional voucher of, I believe, $4,000 and that I would have to purchase a Canon EOS 5 or R5, which it's... I think it's close to four grand or, or something like that for that specific camera. And so they said that that would pay for the camera. You have to call a, a vendor and the vendor knows everything to do and they will ship everything to, to your house. Then you would have to bring it to the event. So <laughs> I was like, hmm, that, that sounds kind of weird. I mean, someone like Gregory would have all this figured out. So I started looking at the camera. I was like, okay, the camera does exist. I'm a Fuji guy. So um, 
and 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 just to to track back really quick, I do photography. Not you know, I'm not a professional photographer per se. My career is elevated technician. So I fix, I build, you know, elevators, or I used to before my injury. And on the side, I would do photography. So I've gotten paid for gigs. And so because I've been injured and I've been out of, uh, I've been on workers' compensation for more than a year and a half, I've been on Indeed, which is a, an application that you go and you see all these job listings. So I applied to a bunch of photography jobs. So instantly I thought, this must be from Indeed, because I know I checked out Gregory's work. This has to this has to coincide with that with those job applications. And I just don't remember because my memory is screwed up. So I was wrestling with the idea that I did or I didn't apply for this job. And I'm so I asked. I said, look, where did you see my work? Because they stated they saw my my resume, my my photos. And so they said, yes, we saw it in an application. We liked the type of photography you do. It fits what we're doing in this particular project. And if you're on board, you would have to sign a contract. So they said, we can't show you the contract unless you agree. So... I went to dinner with my wife and I'm t- telling her, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm excited, but there's something going on in, in the back of my head where I'm still not sure. I said, cause why would, wouldn't there be an interview? So my wife goes, look, if you don't feel right, then don't go along with it. So I said, but I'm curious. I said, the moment I have to send money or, or I see there's any trend, you know, transactions with money from my end, then I'll end it. But I said, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. So I said, send over the contract. I'm on board. Uh, but there were, you know, there were, there were some alerts, right? There were red flags that I, I, I was wrestling with that, you know, like some of the grammar was kind of off. So I figured maybe she's from overseas, you know, maybe she's in a rush. Um, you know, maybe, you know, like the I was, you know, like the first word in the sentence was an in capital. So that kind of caught my eye for some reason. Like, and that happened in a, in a bunch of emails that, that were going back and forth. But I say, you know what, that's me nitpicking. And then the fact that... The, they said, she she said, um, I will get another email from a project lead who will tell me once I sign the contract where the location is at. So I was like, okay, a, a project lead is going to contact me. Uh, there was going to be a mood board that they were going to send me with the type of t- photographs they wanted me to do. And so I was like, hmm, this is... You know, there's something, there's some thought into this. So even if it's a scam, man, they put a lot of thought and they, and they're going to send me a contract. So I read the contract and, and even though I don't have the contract, but the contract at one point said something about nail artist. So I, you know, it doesn't, it tells me, you know, like. Money's going to be sent to me, 500 plus a voucher, and then I would have the camera with my name on it, you know, and that we will use it for the entire shoot and then give it back to Gregory that is contractually his, and that as soon as the, the event is over, we will get the final 4500 And so I sign it on my phone, and I send it. I get an email. And she says, on Saturday, you will receive an email from the project lead who you're assigned to and blah, blah, blah. Welcome aboard. So the next morning, this was on a Friday. The next morning, I wake up and, my, and I do my due diligence. I start researching 
and I find out that this, I'm an idiot, you know, I'm an idiot, you know, plain and simple. But I find out that there were other people who fell for this, who actually went through and received the check, but the check would bounce. I even found out that a wedding photographer fell victim like all the way through and lost about six grand. So, and I'm trying to find a photo that, uh, <laughs> don't mind these memes. Um, as a matter of fact, let me get out of here. Cause, uh, <laughs> I don't want you guys to see something that you're not supposed to, but lo and behold, right. I, I find out that a wedding photographer got, uh, you know, money, uh, was actually, had actually um, given money to these scammers and lost about $6,000. And then this young lady posted a blog post, basically word for the word. And that's where I got this, uh, you know, the screenshot of that email, uh, with that email. I got it from her and it was basically word for word. And she received a check, it bounced. And then they said, oh, you have to send, you know, a certain amount back to us so that we can buy whatever that you need. I think it was like wardrobes, makeup kit and stuff that she would use in a particular modeling job. And then she was like, hell no, I'm not paying you nothing. So as soon as I saw that the Saturday morning that I woke up, I sent an email to the, to the, you know, to the scammer and I'm like look I was made aware that this is a scam please lose my email I don't want any more emails sent from you or I will talk to my lawyer and that was the last I heard <laughs> but I was super embarrassed and then I realized of course that under the circumstances where I'm really you know I guess day to day my you know, my mental capacity changes because of my injury. And so this was a moment where I could have fell victim to a scam that I found out is going on. And people have said because, you know, the photography industry has suffered due to all the lockdowns and anything with, you know, more than 10 people is canceled, any events. And so people are out there trying to find as as much work as they can in the photo industry. And so I guess it makes sense to try to lure in some suckers like myself who actually considered this for a moment. Like, there was a part of me that figured, you know what, this is my opportunity. This is my chance to work with somebody who is well-respected within the industry it could go in, in my uh, resume, my portfolio. It's my opportunity to put my foot through the door. I was so psyched. <laughs> and this is all on a, on a Friday. And then I wake up the next day and I'm like, wait a minute. This is a scam. Let me find out. <laughs> and I was like, wow. Uh, you know, it, it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. But yeah, for my photography friends, I'm sure some of you have gotten this exact email and have done the right thing and said you know what screw off this is phony and um, there were some red flags once again the fact that there was no interview or formal interview and the fact that she didn't tell me exactly where she saw my portfolio or my resume and also the fact that I had to you know, get this voucher from them, submit it to a, to a vendor who was going to give me this expensive full frame Canon camera. And then I would have to, it would be sent to my home and then I would have to take it with me at, uh, to the location. I was like, why, why would someone like Gregory Crutzen who has like movie production, uh, who literally have like a crew of people that it looks like a movie production. 
Like he's directing a film. And it's for, you know, he'll do that for projects. He'll close down streets. And as a matter of fact, let me go back to him so you can see what I'm talking about. And there's a documentary with him on YouTube. He closed this entire street so he could do this particular photo. It was like a movie uh, movie studio working. And so I was like, why would he have Canon cameras come to me? <laughs> So, you know, I was like, wow, I fell for it, Jose. I fell for it. So, yeah, watch out for these scams. Not that many people are going to, you know, not that you guys will fall for it. But I figured it would be a funny story considering that I have, you know, a traumatic brain injury. I nearly fell victim. Good thing I was able to talk to my wife about it. And then somewhere along our conversation, she was like, well, when we get home, do your homework and search some more, but instead I signed the contract, sent the email, and then the next day I, I did my research. So, yeah. So anyway, I am Jose Betancourt. I thank you guys for listening to my videos. Talk to you.